Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math, where we're going to master math one video at a time. So today, my video lesson for you is on how to write absolute value equations. This is a follow-up video to the previous two videos in this playlist, uh, how to solve an absolute value equation and how to solve multi-step absolute value equations. So if you have not experienced solving an absolute value equation, I strongly encourage you to watch those videos prior to this one. So our objectives today are that you will write absolute value equations to represent graphs and real world situations. The question I want you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson is how can you use a number line to help you write an absolute value equation? So we're going to start with a number line so I can demonstrate to you what it looks like. So in previous lessons, we've learned that when we solve an absolute value equation, we sometimes, or a lot of the time, most often get two solutions to the absolute value equation. And when you graph the solutions to an absolute value equation, it looks like two points plotted on a horizontal number line. So we have a solution of negative three and a solution of three, and we're being asked to go backwards. We're being asked to write the absolute value equation rather than solve the absolute value equation. So now we have to think about what these solutions mean. So since the absolute value is defined as the distance a value is from zero, we're going to find the distance of each point, the midpoint, right? The midpoint here is three from zero and three from zero. So we know that the absolute value of something is equal to three. Now what we need to do is understand that it's just the variable x because these are opposites. So if I write the absolute value of x is equal to three, and then I solve this, I'm gonna have x is equal to three and x is equal to negative three, which are my solutions. So the absolute value equation that represents this graph is the absolute value of x equals three. All right, using a number line. Now we're going to do one where it isn't, where your solutions are not opposites. So we're being asked to write this and I'm gonna give you a number line and I strongly encourage you to use this as a visual for yourself when you're doing this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is plot the solutions. We've been given that the solutions are negative four and six. So let's plot those, negative four and six. The next thing I wanna do is find the midpoint between the solutions. So the midpoint between these is one. So you could, there's several ways to do it. You could just count I can see that there's 10, 10 divided by two is five. So I go five, distance of five from negative four and a distance of five from six and I end up at one. So one is the midpoint between the two solutions. So now I need to understand that five is the distance from the midpoint. So that is what my absolute value expression is going to be equal to. Now I need to understand that my midpoint one is really shifted from the distance from zero. So what am I gonna do to my expression inside my absolute value so that I can represent this? So this has been, think of this as being shifted to the right one, okay? We talk about transforming functions. This has been shifted to the right because it's not on zero. So in order to make it be zero, or think about it that way, we're gonna subtract one. So x subtract one, the absolute value of that is equal to five. Now let's talk about this for a minute. If I evaluate negative four, so negative four subtract one, negative four add negative one is negative five, the absolute value of negative five is five, it checks. Let's check six, that's our second solution. 6 subtract 1 is 5, and the absolute value of 5 is 5. So it checks. So my solution, or my equation, is the absolute value of x minus 1 equals 5. Now it's your turn. Please pause, write an absolute value equation, and come back to check your work. Welcome back.
So I hope the first thing you did was to plot your solutions. We're going to plot negative 5 and 5 on our number line. We're going to find the midpoint. And in this case, the midpoint happens to be 0. And the distance from 0 from each solution is 5. So now I know that because it's at 0, the midpoint, that's the absolute value of x is equal to 5. So when your solutions are opposites, you know that you're just going to have the variable inside the absolute value. Try another one. Please pause, write your equation, and come back when you're done. Welcome back. I hope the first thing you did was to plot your solutions. We're going to plot negative 2 and the second solution of 4. And then the next thing I want to do is find the midpoint, the distance between both points. So that would be 1. The distance from negative 2 to 1 is 3. And the distance from 4 to 1 is also 3. So now we know that the absolute value of something has to equal 3 because 3 is our distance between the points and their midpoint. And we're going to look at this, and it's been shifted 1 to the right, right, If we for 0. So that's our distance from our midpoint, and we've subtracted 1 to move the midpoint back to 0. And let's check. Negative 2 in for x. Negative 2 subtract 1 is negative 2 add negative 1, which is negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. It checks. Let's check 4. 4 subtract 1 is 3, and the absolute value of 3 is 3. Your turn. The cushion for a chair needs to be within 0 0.25 millimeters of the desired thickness, which is 31.5 inches. So the desired thickness of a cushion is 31 and a half inches. What they're saying is that when you're manufacturing it, they allowed a manufacturing error of 25 hundredths of a millimeter. So it could be over or under by 25 hundredths of a millimeter and still pass quality control. Which of the following equations represents the range of the thickness of the chair cushion? So go ahead and pause and determine which absolute value equation represents this real world problem. Come back when you're done. Welcome back. So I hope the first thing that you did was to think about this on a number line. So our desired thickness is 31 and a half. So that's actually our midpoint. And we know that it can be 25 hundredths of a millimeter greater or 25 hundredth millimeters of less, smaller. So our distance is 25 hundredths from each of our solutions. So we're looking for an absolute value expression that equals 25 hundredths. So we have a choice, A or D. I can already rule out choices B and C because they're not representing being equal to the distance. So the next thing I want to think about is that 31.5 is needing to be subtracted from X to get back to zero. So here we have the distance from the midpoint, which is 0 0.25, and then we're going to subtract 31.5 to move this back to 0. Now let's think about this. My solutions would be 31.25 and 31.75. If I plug in 31.75 for x and I subtract 31.5, the absolute value of that is 25 hundredths. If I evaluate x to be 31.25 and I subtract 31.5, I get negative 0.25, and the absolute value of that is positive 0.25. So D is the choice. Here's another one for you to try. Your parents have told you that you can help select the breed of dog that you're going to rescue. They've told you that there is one requirement the size of the dog. They want the dog to be taller than 10 inches, but shorter than 36 inches. I would like you to write an absolute value equation to represent the situation. Please pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So let's see how you did. Here's my number line. 
and I'm going to plot my solutions first. So I know I can have a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 36. So the smallest dog has to be 10 inches, and the largest dog can only be 36 or smaller. Now I'm going to find the midpoint between my two points. My midpoint is 23. So you could subtract 36 minus 10 is 26, and that will give you a distance of 13. So 26 between them, 13 to get to the midpoint. So we're coming from the distance of the midpoint, so I know my equation has to be equal to 13 because that represents the distance. And then I need an absolute value equation, and I'm going to subtract 23 to move this back to 0. So x subtract 23 equals 13. Now let's think about this. Will it work? If I put 10 in for x, 10 subtract 23 is negative 13, and the absolute value of negative 13 is positive 13. Let's check the second one just to be sure. 36 in for x. 36 subtract 23 is 13, and the absolute value of 13 is 13, so it checks. So the absolute value of x subtract 23 equals 13 is the equation that represents your family looking for a rescue dog. There you have it. That's how you write absolute value equations. I hope you'll use a number line to help visualize and write, help you write your equations. Thanks for joining me at The Magic of Math, and I hope you have mastered math after one more video. Please subscribe to my channel and sign up for notifications. I hope you have a great day.